I'm finally back on the E9 CSL. I know some of you have been wanting an update, so here we go. In this video, I'll be tackling the near side sills. There is a lot to do on this side of the car. Repairs are needed all the way around the inner front wing, but having already done the other side, it should be slightly quicker. The innermost sill is repaired, but there are still the remains of the sill membrane. The outer rear wing has to be replaced and I've got a complete outer sill to fit. Because I can't see where the spot welds are, I have no choice but to grind the remains of the old membrane rather than drill. The tool of choice by whoever removed the sill membrane was an air chisel. Obviously not a rare BMW enthusiast, or perhaps not even a motor vehicle enthusiast. Perhaps they only had limited time before having to go and move some cattle. We will never know, but hopefully the cattle got moved safe and sound. Here's a tip for you. When you don't know what's the other side of a panel, don't cut all the way through. Halfway will probably do the job and just bend it until it breaks. Seeing inside these panels for the first time is like opening a present at Christmas, except you haven't got the option to return it to the store. If you do accidentally cut too deep while removing panels, you can simply grind away that section to make it look like you never messed up. I can barely remember a time when I didn't have these carbide burrs. Getting into these awkward places without them would be a problem and I'm not sure what I would have done. Halfords make excellent hand chisels. I've had this chisel for years now and I can't recommend it highly enough. Now I've got to a nice bit of original sill, we can see the original paint. It seems this car was primer grey, not the yellow it's currently painted in. The sill membrane is sandwiched between the inner sill and the B post. I've welded a bar between the A and B post to keep things in the right place, but will still allow me to remove the membrane. Getting this apart was tricky, but thankfully, minimal spot welds were used in this area. The sill membrane goes up underneath the inner arch, and I really can't get any further, so I'll just cut it as high as possible. This is the sort of tool that is used on the outer sill removal, and yes, I do have one, but it's a tool that usually causes more work than it saves. Perhaps the only option on very rare occasions, but must be avoided where possible. This is a reference point to determine the height of the membrane. I quite like to be able to start making things better soon, rather than just making them worse. One of the very first cars I worked on after going self-employed was a Triumph Spitfire. This car meant an awful lot to the lady owner, and during the process of removing panels, she saw the car at its worst and burst into tears. I explained that things had to get worse before they got better. It was an unexpected reaction and I haven't been able to recreate that scenario since, try as I might. Back then, I was doing this mobile and carrying tools around in a Perso 306 XND, including a full-size gas bottle. The rear suspension was on its bump stops with all that weight. I was working on the Spitfire in a garage just big enough for the car. If moved over to one side, I could just about kneel down to work on it. My goodness me, you could not offer me enough money to go and do that now. Actually, while we're on the subject of storytelling, you've got to hear this one. Don't worry, I'll be back on the BMW very shortly. I was asked to do some rust repairs on a Nissan Figaro. Do you know the ones? Anyway, I did the welding and arranged for a sprayer to finish the job. The sprayer filled me up and said it's all done you can come and collect it. So my dad drove me to collect the car and when we got there, I could see the back wing looked to be in primer. I greeted the sprayer and he said, it's all done. To which I replied, um, is the back wing still in primer? He said, no, it's all ready to go. I was quite pleased with the color match actually. I was slightly stunned and eventually said, well, the back wing is green and the rest of the car is yellow. He said, is it? He said, I can't see it. Looks good to me. I said, the bit you've painted looks like your lawn and the rest of the car is yellow. He didn't agree, so went to get his wife who thankfully confirmed that he had painted the wing green when the car was yellow. He then revealed to me that he was in fact colorblind. Yes, I had found probably the only colorblind paint sprayer in the country. What he and I didn't realize was the car was originally green so he ordered the paint off the paint code, but the car had been resprayed yellow. There was nothing wrong with the finish. The green stroke yellow blend looked very good. There was just a small detail of the two completely different colors. A 
Okay, back to the job in hand. Grinding off all these plug welds. I used an 8mm diameter plug hole. The punching tools available specifically for this purpose are usually around 5mm. This is too small for a consistent result. If you don't start the arc right in the middle of the small hole, the weld can bridge the gap and not fuse the panels together. The reason these tools offer a hole that is too small is to do with the force required to punch a bigger hole. I use my fly press or a Roper Whitney hole punch. More expensive tools, yes, but the plug weld never fails. I've replaced the rusted metal on the B post reinforcement and now I'm repairing the A post reinforcement. The reason these parts are designed like this is to do with the lack of a B post to roof support, like you'll find on most cars. I've just made it up in sections to something like it was before. I've done the same with the rear inner arch to sill. I've removed as much rust from these reinforcements as possible without media blasting. You might wonder why I'm not media blasting them and there are a couple of reasons. It will make a right mess and the car is not on a roll frame, which would take ages to clean up and it can't go on a roll frame until the car is much stronger. It would be better to blast these parts, but it's just not worth the vast amounts of extra time in my opinion. The inner part of these reinforcements will still have surface corrosion, which I can't do anything about anyway. The best way to make sure this car lasts is to cavity wax everything you can. It will last a very long time if done thoroughly. Now it's time to start fitting the outer sill. There's actually an aluminium cover that finishes this area, and that needs to be test fitted before committing. Make sure the two pieces to be welded are as tight as possible. As soon as you add heat, these will attempt to separate. I don't know, it's something to do with the linear coefficient of thermal expansion. 13 microns per meter per degree, if you really want to know. Now here's something to pay attention to. Don't assume when you clamp the bottom edge of the sill, it will remain straight, because it probably won't. Space the welds apart, not like how I started, and keep an eye on what it's doing as you clamp. It may not seem that important, but it is. Whenever the car is on a ramp, you'll notice this and it can look really bad. The same can happen along the top edge too. I've got a tip for grinding these welds close to an angle. You can't get into the corner because of the thickness of the disc. This is a diamond wheel dresser. It can be used to shape the grinding disc and provides the clearance needed to get into the corner. All ground and I didn't touch the horizontal part of the sill. I think that just about wraps this video up. The channel seems to be growing quite nicely so thanks for your support.